Hello, thank you so much for joining me for another Women Crush Wednesday. Today we're going to talk about Sophie Magdalena Scholl, who was a very important anti-Nazi activist during World War II. about Sophie number one. Sophie was born in 1921, was a student at the University of Munich, and her father, who was actually also an anti-Nazi uh, political activist, was the mayor of her local hometown. The political activism showcased by Sophie and her companions is a very clear example of how people can show dissent against a government which is practicing censorship and all different forms of oppression on their people. Fact number two, Hitler actually rose to power when Sophie was in secondary school. And at first, Sophie was very much a part of the whole pro-Hitler movement that was going on during that time. Sophie was a member of Hitler Youth and the League of German Girls, but she became very quickly upset with the different things that were going on around her. In 1937, Sophie's disenchantment with the whole Nazi party really became solidified when both her father, her brothers, and a few other friends that she had made were arrested because they were participating in a left-wing anti-German movement. Fact number three, Sophie was a very gifted painter and she became very close to a group of artists and thinkers. As a group, they began to discuss the political nature of the time and determined that they really wanted to try and do more in order to fight against this Nazi party. At this time, Sophie's father was still serving in jail for his critical remarks against Hitler. Fact number four. Inspired by the dialogue that Sophie was having with her artist and thinker group, Sophie and her brother Hans became two of the founding six members of the White Rose, which was an anti-Nazi political activist group. This group specifically believed in a nonviolent, peaceful resistance to the Nazi party. So what they would do is basically create pamphlets, which they called the theory of consciousness. And in these pamphlets, they would specifically discuss the philosophy behind these atrocities and how they were so terrible for the surrounding society. As a woman, Sophie proved to be very important. Because she was a woman, she was often underestimated, and so she could very easily slip past the SS men and hand out the pamphlets to different crowds around Nazi Germany. Fact number five. Unfortunately, in 1943, Sophie and the rest of the White Rose were arrested when they were distributing their sixth pamphlet at the University of Munich. During their trial, unfortunately, they were not allowed to give a testimony in order to defend themselves, but they were allowed to give a statement. And in this statement, Sophie said the following, Somebody, after all, had to make a start. What we wrote and said is also believed by many others. They just don't dare express themselves as we did. In 2005, a film titled Sophie Scholl, The Final Days was nominated for a foreign film Oscar. Now this film memorialized both the capture and trial of Sophie and showcased that on February 22nd, Sophie, her brother Hans, and their friend Christoph were sentenced to death because of their outright activism against the Nazi government. Sophie's eloquent last words were, how can we expect righteousness to prevail when there is hardly anyone willing to give himself up individually to a righteous cause? Such a fine sunny day and I have to go, but what does death matter if through us thousands of people are awakened and stirred to action? Thank you so much for joining me for another Women Crush Wednesday where we talked all about Sophie Scholl and her important impact on the anti-Nazi movement as well as her influence on general political activism around the world.